Music. It's ubiquitous across all cultures, languages, and people. No matter where you travel in the world, you'll always encounter some tune or melody that is almost like the audible manifestation of the place that you're in. And whenever you close your eyes, music can take you anywhere. It can take you to the lands you have never seen before or to memories you thought were forgotten. In any given situation, a song can unlock some innate feeling that you never thought you had. And musicians are like magicians, captivating an audience by manipulating the strings on an instrument and eliciting whatever feeling they want from them. Through mastering sound, musicians can make so much more than just noise. They tell a story, a story that can heal, break, and inspire you. A story that focuses you to take an introspective look at where you are and where you want to be. Now, you may be wondering why on God's Green Earth is an anime channel talking about music? Well, it's because of this very instrument right here, the shamisen. Okay, what the hell even is a shamisen and what do you use it for? It's a traditional Japanese instrument from around the 16th century. As for what it's used for, you'll usually hear it in lots of traditional Japanese pieces, like the ones featured in those Snow White notes. The different types of shamisen performances are actually very interesting, but not the point of this video, so I'll let you do the research for that on your own time. So, what is the point of this video? Well, I want to discuss one of the central themes in those Snow White notes, finding your sound. After our protagonist, Setsu Sawamura, loses his grandfather Matsugoro, his life quite literally loses its sound. Matsugoro was a masterclass shamisen player that Setsu followed in every step. He tried and tried to emulate Matsugoro's playing to the T, but could never quite reach the level of mastery attained by Matsugoro. So when his grandfather passed, Setsu felt utterly lost in both life and his journey as a shamisen player. It also doesn't help that Matsugoro's final words to Setsu were, if I die, stop playing the shamisen. Until you realize how you sound so disgraceful, you are not allowed to play it. And it was those words that sent Setsu out of his countryside house and into Tokyo on a journey to find his own sound. And that brings us to the first question of the video, what does it mean to find your own sound? And more specifically, what is your sound? As any creative will tell you, usually a good writer, artist, musician, etc. doesn't necessarily come up with their own works. They're just really good at taking what is already out there and making it their own. As Pablo Picasso puts it, lesser artists borrow and great artists steal. And by stealing, Picasso isn't encouraging that you go out and plagiarize, but instead that you take something that another artist made and make it your own. At the start of this anime, Setsu was behaving as a lesser artist and simply imitating what his grandfather was playing. He never deviated from the path set by Matsugoro and remained fairly complacent in his style. Setsu never had his own sound. And the issue of finding your own sound or your own voice can be fairly common across multiple professions, not just music. Humans are creatures of habits, and we often pick up habits from everyone we interact with. So when you admire someone, you end up imitating their sound in your way of life quite often. Kind of like how Deku tries to act like All Might at the start of My Hero and has to learn how to be his own individual hero over time. And I just want to point out that stealing someone's sound and making it your own isn't bad. In fact, you can see some examples of this in our favorite stories. The creator of Jujutsu Kaisen often mentions that they drew inspirations from Bleach when writing their manga. Similarly, you can see lots of influences from Western comics in Horikoshi's work in My Hero. While I would agree that both of these manga are your stereotypical jump title, both Horikoshi and Akutami have their own unique voice shine through everything that influenced their manga. And their stories are prime examples about how taking someone else's idea and making it better is a really smart way of storytelling. So back to the topic at hand, what is Setsu's sound? Well, over time, it slowly becomes a mix of everyone that he's played with. In each episode we watch as someone new, whether it be his mother, brother, or some random stranger that he met on the street, demand that he plays a piece for them. And while sometimes this piece can come naturally to him and flow out of the strings of his shamisen, most of the time Setsu struggles with the piece and it pushes him to recall not only his memories of his grandfather, but also just how he felt at a certain point of his life. The story has progressed in such a manner that we watch Setsu go from a lost musician taken aback by the blinding lights of Tokyo, to a competitor at a national shamisen tournament named after none other than the grandfather that he idolizes so much. All the emotions Setsu underwent in this journey have impacted his sound and created a new musician, almost like how after being exposed to immense pressure a piece of coal can become a diamond. Setsu's journey is a unique one to say the least. While I personally would have preferred the loner musician floating through Tokyo's storyline that episode 1 seemed to set up, I do understand why the author had Setsu go to a high school. Because what is anime without a high school setting? Nah, I'm just playing. 
Setsu's time spent in his Tokyo high school were pivotal to him actually finding his own sound. By having to undergo the role of a shamisen teacher to prep the school's club for competition, Setsu was exposed to a whole other side of the music learning process. But what ultimately marked the high school arc as a key moment in Setsu's life was having to recreate his grandfather's magnum opus, Shungyo or Spring Dawn. Matsugoro spent the greater part of his life mastering this piece and played it in a way that was virtually impossible for anyone to imitate. But when his classmate asked Setsu to recreate the piece for her grandmother that had heard it a long time ago, he accepted the challenge. Since Shungyo is nearly impossible for anyone other than Matsugoro to play, Setsu very quickly realized that he would have to alter the piece significantly to even hope of performing it. And that was one of the first times that we watched Setsu step out from his grandfather's shadow and produce his own sound. And while his classmate's grandmother quickly realized that the song wasn't the same one she heard all those years ago, Setsu's interpretation of Shungyo did unlock her memories and reminded her of when she was a child. From that point on, we got to see Setsu slowly come to terms with what it means to play your own sound, and this coming of age story really began to shine. Setsu's journey from imitator to master is nowhere near complete. In fact, he has yet to show off his skills at the Matsugoro tournament, so at the time of writing this video, there is no telling exactly how much he has learned since the first episode. But the takeaway still remains the same. We inherently try to follow those we admire because we want to be just like them. Whether it be in sports, music, acting, or hell, even YouTube, we all have goals that we want to achieve. And while imitating our favorites can be helpful in laying a guideline as to where we should start, true success lies in breaking free from our mentor's shadows and becoming our own person. Additionally, breaking into our own sound can be an extremely difficult task, and I believe that we can only ever break free when we challenge ourselves to the point where imitation is no longer enough, and you have to add your own solution. Kinda like how Setsu adapted the Shungyo. In conclusion, those Snow White notes delivers a poignant message about finding your own way that is packaged in your average coming of age anime. And while the show is nowhere near perfect, I really do appreciate the way that the central theme is handled. And of course, the OST of this anime is just phenomenal. And my one major complaint about the series is how much the show deviates from the main storyline set up in the pilot episode. Maybe I just got the wrong first impression, but having Setsu attend a high school did feel a little bit out of place, and I would have much rather had watched a show where he lived alone in Tokyo and had to figure out things along the way. Because at the end of the day, this was Setsu's story, and a majority of the sidecast just felt superfluous to Setsu's journey to find his sound. But besides the fact that the high school storyline felt a little shoehorned in, I did end up really enjoying this anime. Whether you're just looking for a good drama anime to watch, or you're a music geek who loves the sound of the shamisen, I recommend you check out those Snow White notes. And hey, you might just find your own voice in watching Setsu struggle for his.